Double Negative by John Penn, dramatised by Melville Jones, with John Castle as Thorne, Andrew Branch as Abbott, Michael Cochran as Dr Avery, Benjamin Whitrow as Professor Quentin Woods, and Jonathan Taffler as Peter Cousins. The action of the play takes place in and around Oxford. Cousins and Tim's, Peter Cousins' phone, can I help you? No, I'm afraid Mr. Cousins is out of the office at the moment, but he should be back any minute. Oh, well, if you'd like to give me details of the property, I... I'm Kate Minden, and I... Oh, I see. Of course. No, I understand. Well, I'm sure he'd be pleased to handle the sale. Yes, North Oxford is a popular area. Right, I'll tell him you'll call again after the weekend. Thank you. Chauvinist. Why does it always rain for the weekend? Someone's law is that? Everyone deserted you? Ah, uh, let the girls go. They were just sitting looking at the clock. Friday night fever. I can always remember it. But you stayed. Commendable loyalty in my office manager. I thought you might bring the photographs. And you were right. You have a gift. I know. I'm wasted here. <laughs> Amazing. What? You even make that bungalow in Wheatley look attractive. Oh, I'm proud of that one. It was a challenge. I got in all of the garden and none of the motorway. Cut for you. Mm, two sugars. I'll put these in the folders. Leave it. Monday will do. But I stay. You work too hard. I've told you before. Not really. Anyway, I enjoy it. I know. I noticed. Kate, I've been giving some thought to your future here. Oh, have you? Yes. And I believe you'd make an excellent partner. But... Business partner, of course. Although if it wasn't for your boyfriend in Reading... You really think it's a possibility? Yes. I'll try to get something down in writing over the weekend, what's involved and so on. If you're interested, Of course I'm interested. I'm delighted. Good. Well, why don't we celebrate? I'll buy you a real drink, but in this boring instant... No, uh, sorry, I have to get off. Shame. After that lucky fellow in Reading, is it? Well, something like that. I hope he appreciates you. Look, at least let me give you a lift into town. Save you getting wet. No need to bother, Peter, really. It's no bother. It's a pleasure, Kate. You know that. Well, it's out of your way. Not at all. I'm off to the cottage for the weekend. Away from it all. That'll be nice. Very. I'll take you there one day. Oh, don't look so worried. All respectable and above board. Trust me, Kate. After all, we are going to be partners. I thought you said this was a shortcut, Abbott. It usually works, sir. Must be roadworks. Must it. It's history, Sergeant. What is? This. Oxford was not built for the motor car. Not on a wet Friday evening. Where are they all going? Home to their loved ones, Abbott. Unlike some of us. Come on, sir. It's my first weekend off since Christmas. Well deserved, I'm sure. What will you do? Going away. Weekend break. Quite reasonable. Somewhere exotic? Chipping Camden. Very adventurous. Must be all of 30 miles away. Lovely, though. Oh, it's nothing like our Cotswolds at this time of the year. Think of me, toiling over this art theft business, telling the chief constable we've made nil progress in several thousand carefully selected words. You're not enjoying this one, are you, sir? Ten out of ten, Abbott. <laughs> Crimes without victims. Boring. What about the owners of the paintings? Am I supposed to bleed because one rich collector steals from another? Who loses? The insurance company. <laughs> them, they never lose. Oh, that last movement... Around here, the gallery's just past the corner. Nowhere to park. Oh, for God's sake, use the double yellow line, Sergeant. Oh, but last if night you get a ticket, send it to the Chief Constable. At least we'll be wasting our time at his expense. Yeah. Call for you, Mr. Cousins. Oh, who is it? I said I didn't want any calls. Uh, she didn't say. Any sign of Kate yet? No, not yet. Well, where the hell is she? Shall I put the call through? Yeah, right. Uh, Peter Cousins here. Can I help? 
Oh, no, I'm afraid not. I don't know where she is. She hasn't contacted us yet. No, I'm sure she will. She's very conscientious. No, well, perhaps it's the traffic, or she could be ill, I suppose. I'll get her to call you, shall I? Right. And that's an Abingdon number. And and who shall I say is... Hello? Hello? Uh, of course not. But I'm not lively company, Albert. Oh, bad, was it, sir? Not good. We have to try harder. Get result. Painstaking investigation. Every cliche in the book. You left out attention to detail. I don't know why he doesn't just switch on a recorded message. Oh, I'll pass the sauce, will you, sir? A plateful of chips drowned in gravy and sauce. Weekend away seems to have sharpened your appetite. Right, it's great. We did a lot of walking. Good. You can do some more this afternoon round the art dealers and antique shops. Here, have a long list. Mm, right. What's this? Oh, oh, good. There's one in Summertown. I'm calling out the estate agents, too. Buying a house? No, I just passed it on. Missing girl, not turned up for work. On Monday, thousands don't turn up for work. Mm, there seems to be a bit more to it than that, sir. There it's better be more to it, Sergeant. Your time is precious to me at the moment. Don't waste it. Yes, I know. So I hope you don't think I'm wasting your time, Sergeant. Not at all, sir. Now, you say you've contacted her landlady? Yes, Kate left her Friday morning and hasn't been back. Is that unusual? Not really, it seems. She was away most weekends. With this boyfriend in Reading? I suppose so. Only suppose? Well... Yes, sir? You see, I don't know if there really is a boyfriend. Oh? It had become a sort of a joke. She never denied it. Or confirmed it? No. In fact, she didn't expand much on the subject at all. Shy, perhaps? No, I, I don't think that. What, then? You'd better tell me, sir. It was just an area of her life she didn't want to talk about, I suppose. You don't know much about her life outside of work, do you, sir? No. Why should I? <laughs> Quite. But it doesn't give us much to go on if she doesn't turn up. I suppose not. Well, I shouldn't worry yet. Probably a simple explanation usually is. But it's so unlike her. Kate's conscientious, reliable. This is quite out of character. That's why I'm so concerned. Yeah, I understand. Well, uh, we'll circulate a description, and if I could take this photograph. Very striking-looking girl, isn't she? That hair. Yes. She's beautiful. And you took this, you say? Yes, Sergeant, for publicity purposes. You know, staff line-ups in the local papers, that sort of thing. Oh, I see. Uh, well, we'll keep in touch, Mr Cousins, and you'll let us know if she turns up here. Of course. Hope to God she does. And in the meantime, if you remember anything else, friends, places you might have gone, anything like that, you'll give me a ring? Of course. Funny, isn't it? How little you really know about people. People you think you're close to. Yes, sir. It is quite odd. They do know we're coming, I hope. I don't want to spend the afternoon hanging around a bus station. Yes, sir, I spoke to the traffic manager. Good. If she caught a bus to Reading, the driver should remember her, especially if this photograph is a true likeness. The girls in the office say it is. That's about all they did say. Afraid so. Mm, she kept herself to herself. And she'd been there nearly a year. True. Something of a loner. The landlady said the same. You know what these bed sits are like. Pay the rent and nobody really cares if you're dead or alive. Now, she did confirm she was away every weekend. Ah, the elusive boyfriend. Yeah, I suppose so. Only suppose, Abbott. Oh, no one ever saw him. Cousins thinks it could have been an office joke. But she was going to Reading last Friday when Cousins dropped her at the bus station. That's what I'm assuming. That's why we need to check. So, Cousins was the last person to see her, then? Yes. And I've checked all the hospitals in a 30-mile radius. She's not been in an accident. Check the morgues? Of course, but I thought you said I wasn't... I did. I'm sure Miss Kate Minden has simply gone off on some private pleasure trail. But... It has been four days. Cousins have started pestering me. Not just you, Abbott. Word has reached our beloved leader. Oh, no. Hence, Merivale's decision that I can be spared for a few hours from the world of fine art. He wants a result here as well. My God, Abbott. Aren't bus stations depressing places? Long lines of people staring into space. Well, off you go. Talk to our traffic manager, friend. Well? Uh, he says the driver's over there. Stand seven. Come on, then. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, this was dead seven. Here we are. Excuse me. You can't get on here. You have to wait. Police. What? Police. Detective Sergeant Abbott, and this is Detective Superintendent Thorne. Oh. You'd better come on, then. Thank you. Right. So, how can I help you? We understand you took out the 5.30 to Reading last Friday, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Bitch of a night, wasn't it? Tipping it down, hate driving in those conditions. Just have a look at this photograph, please. Ah. Hmm. Recognise her? Oh, yeah. I remember. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Real looker, isn't she? So she was a passenger on your bus last night? Oh, Friday. no, not on my bus, not to Reading. But you said you remember her? Yeah, I do. I thought of myself, <laughs> you'll get that lovely air of yours all wet standing out in the rain. Standing? Standing where? Well, out there at the Abingdon stop, where she always stood. Always? Oh, yeah, regular clockwork. Friday night. Often past the there. You see, I go out ten minutes before the Abingdon. And she and was then... definitely there last Friday. Yeah, like I say, in the rain. That's how I remember. Who was driving the Abingdon bus last Friday? Do you remember? Friday. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that would have been Dickie Marshall. <laughs> you check with him. He'll remember her all right. No doubt about that. Here you are, Gov. Two teas with sugar. Cheers. Hardly a productive afternoon. No, sir. Except we know she didn't go to Reading. Not by bus, anyway. Nor to Abingdon, not last Friday. But that's where she usually went. She was quite a regular. All we've established is that she was waiting at the Abingdon stop at about 5.30, but she wasn't there when the bus arrived ten minutes later. Yeah. Do you think someone gave her a lift? I don't know. Perhaps she just got fed up standing in the rain. And went off somewhere. Caught Why? a later bus. Why not? That's what I would have done. Yeah. But then what? Speculation, Abbott. Let's stick to what we know. Which is? Two coffees. That Kate Minden commuted to Abingdon at the weekend. And not to the boyfriend in Reading. Hmm. But what she does in Abingdon, we... Hey, wait a minute, there was a call. What call? Cousins mentioned it. There'd been a call for her on Monday morning from someone in Abingdon. But they didn't leave a name. Very helpful. But there was a number. I think it's in the file. For God's sake, why haven't you checked it out? Well, Cousins assumed it was probably one of her clients. But he wasn't sure. No. I would have thought with so little to go on, you might have followed up on a possible lead, however small. I suppose I was concentrating on the boyfriend in Reading, that angle. Sorry, sir. The boyfriend could be in Abingdon. It could have been him on the phone. Oh, no. You sound very certain. It was a woman. Cousins said it was a woman. Right. Drink up and let's move, Sergeant. We'll go by the bypass. It'll be quicker. The bypass? We're going to Abingdon, Abbott. I'll call up on the radio, and by the time we get there, we shall have the address to match the number in your file, OK? <clears throat> let's hope she's in. There's someone coming. Good afternoon, Mrs. Richards. Yes, uh, who is it? Detective Superintendent Thorne, and this is Detective Sergeant Abbott. Oh, yes, of course. I, I was expecting you sooner or later. Really? Oh, yes. May we come in for a moment? Well, I have to meet Zelda soon. Zelda? My granddaughter. I meet her from school. Uh, we won't keep you long, Mrs. Richards. Oh, better come through. Thank you very much. Uh, this way, please. Uh, oh, oh uh, mind the bike. <laughs> Boy, I'm sorry about the mess. Uh, Zelda's got all her pace out. Oh, I know what it's like, Mrs. Richards. I've got a six-year-old. Oh, have you? Yeah. Zelda's seven and a half. Oh. Good as gold, really. You wouldn't know she was in the house. She lives with you? Yes. I thought you knew. I found out somehow. May we uh, sit down? Oh. There are some questions. I'm sorry, of course. Oh, my. I'm in such a state. I'm so worried. Just uh, uh, put the books on the floor. Abbott. Yes, sir? Books. On the floor. Ah, yes, sir. She is all right, isn't she? Nothing has happened to her, has it? Happened to who, Mrs. Richards? To Kate, of course. Well, that is why you're here, isn't it? May I ask why you're so concerned about Miss Minden? Concerned? My daughter goes missing. Your daughter? Oh, well, yes, I, I thought you must know. Otherwise, why are you here? You made a call to your daughter's office on Monday morning, Mrs. Richards? Oh, yes. <laughs> She told me never to call, but I was so worried. Do you know why she told you she didn't want you to call? Because they didn't know about Zelda. That's why I haven't been to the police myself. I just kept hoping from Is Zelda minute. Kate's daughter? Yes. Yes. 
Why does it have to be a secret, Mrs. Richards? Well, I know it must sound stupid, but Kay insisted. She said, if you're a single parent, employers don't take you seriously. She's very ambitious, you see. So you look after Zelda whilst your daughter acts out the life of a single woman in Oxford. Well, Kay, it's very conscientious. She comes home every weekend. And I love Zelda. This is her place, you see. She's my life now, Superintendent. No. Since my husband died. Nearly two years ago. Ah, oh, she's very pretty. <laughs> And Zelda's father? Oh, dead. He's dead. So you and your daughter are both widows? Oh, yes. Well, that's why we set up house together. I hope this doesn't sound tactless, Mrs. Richards, but I have to ask if we were to find Kate. Does your daughter have anyone else in her life? A special friend, perhaps? No, or a... uh, she didn't want that. Not after... Not after what she'd been through. Oh, of course, but she's young, attractive. I wondered whether she mentioned anyone to you. Well, I'd be sure there's plenty you'd like to take up with her. That boss, for one. Peter Cousins? Yes, he's asked her out, but she puts him off. But there's no one else, you're sure? I told you. Why'd you ask that? What's happened? You tell me, what's happened? She's all right, isn't she? Please tell me she's all right. Well, I'm not convinced. Not by that charade. But if the girl is really ambitious, it makes sense. You know what it's like for working mothers and a single parent... The world is full of single parents, Abbott. Hardly a rare species. So why else would she be so secretive? I don't know. Besides, I don't suppose it matters. What? Kate Minden is playing some kind of a game, isn't she? It doesn't seem out of character that she should decide to take herself off somewhere. But it might have got her into trouble. Danger, even. <laughs> you think she might be lying in a ditch somewhere? It's possible. Of course it's possible, but is it probable? Some bloke could have picked her up at the bus One stop. of the things we know for certain about Kate Minden is that she's intelligent and disciplined. She doesn't sound the sort to take lifts from strange men in the middle of Oxford on a busy Friday evening, does she? So what do we do next? You, Sergeant, not we. I can't spend more time on this, not on a missing person. It's back to missing paintings, far more important in Merivale's eyes. But if it was more serious... I'm sure... I hope it won't be. Difficult to know what more I can do at the moment. One, find out about the late Mr. Minden. Two, obtain details from the marriage certificate. His family, friends, might give you a lead where she could have gone. Hmm, sounds like a lot of paperwork. Well, you asked what you should do. Painstaking investigation, attention to detail. And no shortcuts, no shortcuts. Play it by the book. Hmm. Haven't you finished that yet? Yeah, nearly there. How many C's in Picasso? Just the one. And only one Kane Constable. What? Joke. Ah. Yes? Oh, then. Um, sorry, sir. Urgent fire for Sergeant Abbott. Oh. From the Met. Thanks, Harry. It's okay. Aha. Here we are. And there he is, Stephen Wayne Minden. Oh, nasty-looking piece of work, isn't he? I knew it was all a charade. Widowed, indeed. I suppose he was taken from her, in a manner of speaking. Yes, not interred, but interned. Released on parole four weeks ago, only served three years. Yeah, I know how they shovel them out. Good for Home Office statistics. Yeah, there was a lot of money on that job. None of it recovered. Quite, so perhaps Kate thought it was time for a reconciliation. But they were separated before he went inside. Their friends from the old days told me that. Maybe, but they also told you how ambitious she was, tight with money, didn't they? Yes, but all put aside for the little girl. So perhaps she wants to send Zelda to Rodine. Oh, I agree it fits. She couldn't tell anybody, so she just takes off after the money. And I've no doubt she'll come back for Zelda in a few days' time and they'll all live happily ever after. Yeah. Sir, you were right then, sir. Nobody's in ditches. And we must be grateful for that. Right, Abbott, pass what you've got onto the Met. They can try chasing the money. We have other priorities, I'm afraid. Mm, art treasures. At least I can tell Merivale we seem to have got a result with the Minden girl, can't I? Yes, I suppose so. Brian 
made it then. What's it look like? What did you tell him this time? Uh, that I was going to see Sarah to discuss the biology essay. <laughs> we'll have our own biology lesson, eh? In Copley Wood. Oh, stop it, Brian. Don't talk like that. You know you like it. Come no, here. Not now. Someone could see us. Come on. Oh, you stick a beer. Just a pint or two. Get me going. Nasty rough, aren't I? You should listen to your dad, you know. If we're going somewhere, let's go. I, I've got to get back. Right. Dying for it, aren't you? Well, jump up then. You know where to hang on. That's it. Nice and tight. Mm. Sir, have you got a minute? Not really, Abbott, but come in anyway. I'm up to my eyes in Van Dyke's. Yes, what is it? Another missing girl, sir. Sergeant Morris oh, of Columbia just called Oh, for God's sake, up. Abbott. If you're going to pester me every time some restless adolescent goes missing... Yes, she is, too. What? An adolescent, almost 17. Well, they always are. It's a restless age. They end up sleeping in cardboard boxes in London. It's a sad fact of life, man. I do know that, sir. Yes, well... I'm sorry, but... I wouldn't have bothered you with it, but there are similarities. Similarities? That's why Sergeant Morris at Columbury got onto us. Oh, at least he's one of our brighter country cousins. He was struck by the physical similarities, too. Look, sir. Hmm. Pretty girl. Who is she? Mary Rush, only daughter of a very respectable family. Well, it doesn't mean Mary shares their moral outlook, does it? She was doing her A-levels. Quiet, steady worker. I think you should hear what Morris told me. All right, tell me about it. She went out a couple of evenings ago to see a school friend. At least, that's what she told her dad. But it wasn't the truth. No. It seems she was going out with a local yobbo, Brian Doyle. He's got a bit of minor form. Raves, drugs, punch-ups, that sort of stuff. Ah, oh, yes, one of the new rural pursuits. So what does friend Doyle say for himself? He admits picking her up. Says they went to Copley Wood. It's a local beauty spot. I had a picnic there once. With banana sandwiches, I'm sure. Get to the point, Abbott. What happened in Copley Wood? Doyle says they had a quarrel and she ran off. Is that all? Yes. The local police have searched the wood. No sign of her. No sign of a struggle. Neighbours say that Doyle came back at the time he said. I see. She just vanished in the wood. Is that what you're saying? Sergeant Morris can't make any sense of it. That's why he got into us. That and, as I say, the similarity with Kate Minden. The long hair. The long auburn hair, yes. Morris remembered Kate Minden's photograph. We circulated it to all stations. Coincidence, Abbott. Besides, we can explain why Kate Minton disappeared. We think we can, but we could be wrong, sir. No one has seen her for ten days now. And you think we're wrong? That I'm wrong? Well, I, I don't know. I'm just not sure. If it will put your mind at rest, I think we could clear this one up pretty quickly. How? Doyle. He needs leaning on. Morris wouldn't know how to handle that. I think if Doyle was asked the right questions in the right way, he could tell us exactly why he quarrelled with Mary Rush. Look, how many more times I've told you everything? No, I don't think so, Mr Doyle. I have. No, I want to go. I've rights, you know. But why should she run away? What did you do to Mary Rush, Mr Doyle? Nothing. She ran away from nothing? Just a quarrel. I told old Chubby Chops you Morris. You told who? Old Morris. I told Sergeant Morris that we had a quarrel. What about? I said, what about? Tell me what you argued about. Well, she didn't want... Well, she said it wasn't... What didn't she want? Tell me. You know. Sex. She didn't want you to have sex with her. Is that it, Mr. Doyle? Yes. I had sex with a lot of girls, have you? Had you made love to Mary before? An easy lay, was she? Well? No, not all the way, you know. I see. She was a virgin, was she? Well, I don't know. Yes, I suppose so. So you tried to rape her, didn't you? No, it wasn't and like And she that. resisted, fought and screamed, didn't oh. she? That's when you lost control, when you tried to silence her. Did you put your hands over her mouth? Is that what you did, I Mr. Didn't, Doyle? I didn't do anything. You're strong, aren't you? Wouldn't take much to stop her, to shut her up, to oh, shut her up for good, keep wrong. her quiet, stop her saying anything. No, I've told you how it was. You've got no right to stop I have every right. Don't you forget that boy. <sighs> Abbott. Just remind me what Mr. Doyle told Sergeant Morris in his original statement. Uh, here we are. Uh, we kissed and fooled about a bit, but she got a bit edgy. That's how it was. Be quiet. Carry on, Abbott. She said she thought someone was watching us. Who was watching you? Did you see anyone? No. I told her she was just imagining it. And according to you, that's when she ran off? Yes. And didn't you run after her? Well, not for a bit. 
I thought she was just messing about. And then? Well, after a minute or two, I went looking for her. But she'd vanished into thin air. You asking us to believe that? Well, the woods are thick there. You can hide easy. That's what you thought she was doing, playing hide and seek? After you just tried to rape her? I didn't. Don't you say that. So where had she gone then, Doyle? I don't know. Well, perhaps in a car. Car? I told Sergeant Morris. I thought I might have heard a car drive up. Thought you might have. You're making that up, aren't you? It's rubbish. No. It was faint, but I'm pretty sure... Well, she might have got in it. On the other hand, she might not. She might still be in Copley Wood, exactly where you left her. There, here you go, sir. Pint of that special. Oh, uh, thank you, Albert. Hmm, nice place, this. Yeah. Mary and I come out here for a drink some weekends. Oh, that's good. Shame you're driving, Abbott. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, at least the lemonade's cold. I needed that. Well, what do we make of our yobbo friend? He didn't admit to anything, did he? Oh, I hardly expected him to, did you? I really thought... Look at the facts. They've been through Copley Wood with a tooth comb. Not a thing. There are several neighbours who report Doyle coming home on his motorbike at the time he said, acting and looking quite normal. Hardly the demeanour of a man who just raped, murdered and buried Mary Rush. So what did happen, sir? Well, probably like he said, he went too far, she got scared and ran off. And then? Who can say? <sighs> it seems she comes from a strict home, very religious parents. Perhaps she felt ashamed, dirty, couldn't face them. Uh -huh. I expect she'll show up in a day or two, they usually do, you know. So, just another teenage runner, then? Hmm. And no connection with Kate Minden? Not even with the physical similarities? Good figures, the long red hair? Well, there's nothing else to link them, is there? And they both had reasons to take off, Kate to find her former husband... And Mary Rush? What was she running from? Her parents have it. Domestic restraints. You wait until your daughter grows up a bit. Oh, thanks. Now, two disappearances are probably coincidence. Show me a third, and I'll begin to get worried. Just try to keep the weight off it for a day or two, Mrs. James. Nothing broken. Excuse me, Dr. Avery, can you take a call? Uh, who is it, nurse? Linda Jackson. All right. Um, if you just carry on with the bandaging. Uh, I won't be a moment. <clears throat> Linda, I thought I told you... No, no, no don't worry. I, I guess it must be important. <laughs> well, that is important. Yeah, got it. Um, turn down a regular two. Yeah, regular two. And put on the bottom shelf. Fine. I'll get a bottle of wine on the way home. Hmm? Uh, what time is your tutorial? Who, who's it with? Oh, Quentin Woods, eh? Well, don't drink too much of his sherry. Now he fancies you. Yeah, bye, darling. See you later. Please, just a small one. Not driving, are you? Only a bike. Well, then. There you are. One modest tot. Thank you. Oh, hardly modest. Shallow draughts intoxicate the brain. And drinking largely sobers us again. <laughs> Pope? Yes, well done. Your erudition never fails to delight me, <laughs> Linda Jackson. I'll drink to it. And your research project. <laughs> You really think it's taking shape? Absolutely. In fact, I'm very impressed. Yours is an incisive and original mind. Well, I... Beauty, too. A rare combination, my dear. That's a sherry talking, I think. Oh, you're far too modest. I, I believe you have a very bright future. Possibly even here, in this college. The research fellowship? You think there's a chance? Oh, yes, indeed I do. Of all my postgraduate students, you, my dear Linda, are the shining star. I am whispering your glory at high table. Notice is being taken. I hadn't had to hope. <laughs> I'd give anything to stay in Oxford. Well, I'll do what I can, trust me. You're very kind. It's my pleasure. Uh, please don't think me rude, but I really should go. Oh, uh, so soon? If you'd finished with my essays. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, they're, um, <clears throat> they're on the table uh, somewhere. Here we are. Thank you. Oh, this is new, isn't it? When did you take this? Mm -hmm. The baby. Um, yes, amusing, isn't it? Do, do you like it? <laughs> yes, it's fun. Wasn't <laughs> it hard, though? Well, uh, well, getting the child to keep still, you mean, to keep looking at the camera. And to tolerate that huge satin bow round its middle. Oh, she loved it. I, I must have a way with children. <laughs> well, who is it? Uh, my granddaughter. I hate to admit. Granddaughter? Mm. You hardly seem old enough. No, oh, kind of you, my dear, but I... I fear so. Time's winged chariot hurrying near and all that. 
for all of us, Linda, even for you. <laughs> Time's winged chariot. Dr. Avery? Here, please. Detective Superintendent Thorne, this is Detective Sergeant Abbott. Come in, please. Uh, in there, if you will. You're the one in charge, aren't you? The missing That's girls? right. I read it in the papers, so that's why I specifically asked for you. I understand your concern, Doctor, but there may be no connection. If I could just establish some facts, perhaps. Yes, of course, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, please do sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. I I'm just not thinking straight. I I've been up all night just walking around looking for her. I, I thought perhaps she'd had an accident, been knocked off a bike or something. But she hasn't. We've checked. So where is she? I have to ask you this, Dr. Avery. You hadn't quarrelled with your fiancé, had you? She might... No. We were planning a celebration dinner. What were you celebrating? Um, my birthday. I see. We've been looking forward to it. You see, I, I sleep at the hospital most nights when I get any sleep. But not last night? No, I have a couple of days off. And when you're not at the hospital, you share this flat with Miss Jackson, is that it? Yes. Helps Linda with the rent. I'm sure. Who else lives in the house, do you know? The landlord. Well, well, landlady, actually. A, a Miss Foyle. Just her? No, she, she has a companion, Miss Gower. They have the upstairs between them. Have you asked if either of them saw Linda come or go yesterday? No, I, I didn't think to. I, well, we don't have much to do with them. Abbott, yes. perhaps you could just nip upstairs. Yes, sir. When did you last see your fiancé, Dr. Avery? We spoke on the telephone yesterday afternoon. And she seemed perfectly normal, not stressed. Quite the opposite. She left instructions about dinner. We joked a bit about Quentin. Quentin? Uh, Quentin Woods, her director of studies. She had a tutorial with him. Uh, did she go to it? Have you checked? Yes, of course. It was the first thing I thought of. That perhaps he'd kept her late. Talking. Did he often do that? Well, a bit. Talking about her work, you mean? That and other things. What other things? Oh, I don't know. Does it matter? It might. It's no secret. I, I think Quentin fancies Linda, you, you know, in a harmless sort of way. And you didn't mind? No, not really. I mean, he's old enough to be her father. And last night, was there any talking? No. He said she left promptly, anxious to get home. At least that's what he said. But she never got here. It's sugar, Sergeant. Uh, two, please, oh, Miss Gower. Oh, real sweet tooth, I see. Yeah. <laughs> there. Oh, uh, thank you. Mmm. <laughs> That's lovely. Darjeeling. Oh? Oh, I'm sorry we can't be more help, Sergeant, but we really don't pry into other people's business, do we, Betty? Certainly not. I just thought you might have noticed Miss Jackson leaving the house. I was engaged in the back garden all the afternoon. I would have seen nothing, oh, I'm afraid. Oh, very keen gardeners, you see. You could really imagine you were out in the country. And I'm yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure. Um, how old do you know Miss Jackson and Dr. Avery? Hardly at all. Mm -hmm. They're perfectly satisfactory tenants. That's all we ask. Uh, of course. So you were happy to have them in the house? An old house like this requires a deal of looking after, Sergeant. We have to rent out the flat economic necessity. Oh, and we've been so lucky with our tenants. We had a visiting professor from America, Morton, a charming man. Yeah. And now the young doctor and Miss Jackson. She's a lovely girl, you know. They're quite striking, I understand. Tall, mm. long auburn hair. Yes. Oh, I do hope she's all right. One does read such dreadful things. Frightful. And I shall need photographs of all three girls. Right, sir. You've arranged to have extra lines opened and manned? Yes, sir, from 6.30. Good. Someone in this area must have seen one of them. The reward might help, sir. The local papers will splash it tonight. A thousand pounds might stir the odd memory. Yes. Cousins must be really fond of Kate Minden to offer that sort of money. And if we find her, we won't be far from the others. I was wrong, Abbott, wasn't I? Badly wrong, complacent. As you said, it looked like coincidence until the third. And Linda Jackson is different. There's no evidence she had any reason to disappear. She had everything going for her. Well, perhaps this television appeal will turn something up. I hope so, Abbott. Three disappearances, three lookalikes. There's a pattern now, you see. That's not good, is it? it suggests planning. Planning? And I'm beginning to see obsession. Someone who's dangerously unbalanced. We need to find these girls quickly.
Ah, oh, good evening, sir. See what you started out there? My God, the power of television. Oh, you came across very well, sir. Natural star quality, fluent. Yes, seeing... thank you, Albert. Anything useful turned up? Yeah, a couple. I've got the details here. We've had the usual cranks, of course. Uh, of course. And dozens of reported sightings from the breadth of the land, no doubt. Oh, they mean well. I expect so. Well, there are two so far, you see. Yeah, retired headmistress says she saw Kate waiting at the bus oh, stop. Oh, come on, Abbott, we know that. The two bus drivers... Now, hang on, sir, there's more. She also saw a car stop and pick Kate up. Did she know? Yeah. That's better. But the driver? Did mm. she see the driver? Oh, yeah, that's the problem. You see, she was waiting on the other side of the road, trying to cross. Uh, you remember what the traffic was like that yes. night? Well, she remembers Kate at the stop... And when she saw a picture on the television tonight, it came back to her. And? She noticed a car pull up, but then one of those big R-ticks stopped in front of her. By the time it moved on, Kate and the car are gone. And she didn't get sight of the driver? No, it was raining. The windows were all misted up. The car, then? She's not very good on cars, I'm afraid. Oh, well, she must have noticed something, damn it all. She thought it was blue, blue or green. A great help. Well, I'll go and see her, of course, but I don't think she'll do much better. At least we know it was a car. She was picked up. Yeah, true. Then perhaps Doyle wasn't lying when he said I thought I might have heard a car drive off. Perhaps Mary Rush did go off in a car. But Linda, why should she get into a car so close to home? And what happened to her bike? Oh, I don't know if we're much further on, Abbott. Yeah. And the second call? Ah, oh, well, he wouldn't give his name, but uh, someone wanted the reward money, the thousand pounds. Well, there'll be lots of nutters claiming that. Yeah, of course, but he knows Kate Minden all right. Details he gave me about her and so on. Look... I see. Now, that is interesting. Is he coming in? Oh, no, refused. We, or that is you, have got to go to him. He'll be in the, uh, this pub. We found it on the map just here. Look, uh, I've got directions. Just you, he said. Take anyone with you and he won't talk. And you have to take the cash with you. Draw it from petty cash to her. I told him it didn't work like that. And what did our mysterious friend say? Take it or leave it. Well... I think I'd better take it, don't you? Oh, come, of course. Keep up. No, 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 no. You stay here. Monitor the calls. But, sir, he could be dangerous. That's all right, Albert. I'm a policeman, remember? I got the distinct impression he didn't like policemen. No, I don't suppose he would. Not if he's who I think he is. Um, Mind if I join you? <laughs> Detective Superintendent Thorne. You by yourself, like I said. Quite alone. You better be. I don't trust you bastards. Not always seen eye to eye with the law, have you? Mr. Minden... How the hell did you know who I... have seen your mugshot. Good likeness. Once you sniffed money, I thought you might call. So, where is it? Oh, really, Mr. Minden. Information first. Now, where is your wife, Kate? There. The whore. Look at her. Certainly looks like her. Well, of course it bleeding is. I should know, shouldn't I? Miss High and Mighty, she always was. Now look at her like that. All trussed up like some bloody chicken. <laughs> I didn't know she was into that stuff. Never let on to me, the bitch. How did you know about these pictures of your wife? Oh, I didn't. But why? Look, I've been in prison, haven't I? Cooped up. Not set my eyes on a woman. So you were just browsing, is that it? Snuffling in the porn trough? Look, don't you start preaching. How do to I me? know these photographs are recent? Well, it's this month's edition. Just out. Look at the date. That doesn't mean the pictures are new, does it? Your wife might have posed for these a long time ago. Oh, no. Not when she was with me, she didn't. Not when she was my wife, I'd have sorted her oh, out. Oh, you're a man of stern morality, Mr. Minden. Grievous bodily harm is one thing, but you. I don't have to listen to this. I want the money. Sit down, Minden. That's better. The reward was for information leading to the whereabouts of your wife. These pictures don't tell us where she is, do they? Well, find out who took them, then you'll know. Possibly, and then, and only then, will we consider the matter of the thousand pounds. You sod. What really matters to you, the money or your missing wife? For all I know, you might have met up with her since coming out. You might... You're mad, you're Just leave bloody... your address with me, Mr. Minden. I'm sure your parole officer would like it, too. Oh, and, um... I'll give you a receipt for your magazine. I should have known better than to trust a pig. Take my advice, Mr. Minden. Try to keep out of trouble. Bastard. It's in Clapham, south side of the common, he said. Right, well, we'll be there about 3.30. Fix it for then. Yeah, they don't just publish girly mags. Uh, he was very keen to tell me that, was Mr. Sharp. Probably thought we were the vice squad. <laughs> <laughs> he said the Kate Minden set of pics came in about three weeks ago. Which was when she disappeared. Yeah. 
But why should she turn to that? I mean, it seems way out of character. I agree. We know she was ambitious for Zelda, but not enough to prostitute herself. Do you think she was forced? Possibly, and that worries me. And what about Minden? I mean, was that just coincidence, him picking up that magazine? Well, I don't think he has the guile for anything too complicated, but I could be wrong. I just don't see what connects these three girls. Apart, that is, from their physical similarities. Two from the city, one out in the sticks, different lifestyles, no point of contact. That we know about. Indeed. Someone knew all three. But who? Doyle? Oh, he's always boasting about his reputation with the ladies. I can't see him mixing in Linda's circle, can you? Don's, doctor's son? Hardly, but we must rule nothing out. All we know for certain is that Peter Cousins admits to being with Kate just before she vanished and that Brian Doyle was with Mary Rush and that tutor chap... Quentin Woods. Right, he was the last one to see Linda. That we know about. Unless she did make it home, in which case Paul Avery comes into the frame. Yes. Something struck me about the good doctor. He was evasive over one point. Did you notice? No, afraid not, sir. Just a small thing. When I asked him what their celebration dinner was for, he hesitated before saying it was his birthday. I wonder why. He had a lot in his mind, didn't he? Not thinking straight. Probably. However, I think we have to check them out, all of them. Let's find out where they were, who they were with, when all three girls disappeared. Right, sir. Get back to Sergeant Morrison Cullenbury. Might be quite a bit tougher this time round. He didn't take kindly to Doyle calling him chubby. He <laughs> can interview Doyle. <laughs> you can go back and see Mr Cousins. Have a word with Avery, too. Oh, what about Quentin Woods? I'll see, uh, Uncle Quentin. A morning in the groves of Academe Abbott. Very good for me. One hesitates to criticize a fellow academic, I contend that Professor Wellsberg has not only misinterpreted the poem, but misinterpreted his misinterpretation. <laughs> I will thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We shall resume the entertainment in the same place, same time next week. Uh, thank you, Dr. Woods. Very impressive, Dr. Woods, if I may say. It's stimulating. Oh, thank you. I don't believe I've seen you at one of my lectures before. Are you a mature student, Mr... Sadly not. No, this is a unique occasion. The Norse sagas, is that your field? I'm afraid not. There, that's my field. Oh, I see. A somewhat unorthodox approach, if I might say. I didn't want to take up too much of your valuable time. How considerate, but I fear you may be wasting your valuable time. I really can add nothing more. Yes, I've seen your statement. I'm desperately concerned, of course. Of course. He's a most talented student. Attractive, too. Yeah, as you say, uh, attractive, too. However, after Miss Jackson left my I've house... I've not come to ask about Miss Jackson. I beg your pardon? The other two girls, you know about them? Right. Know about the case? Uh, from the papers. Please look at these photographs for me. Look, I don't Please. see why... Well? Have you seen either or both of those girls before? No. Sure? Positive. And now, if you'll excuse me... I'd like you to do one more thing for me, Dr. Woods. Well? I want you to try to remember where you were and who you were with on two specific occasions. Look, this is silly. Perhaps. <laughs> and tricky. So if I just tell you the dates and times now, I'll call back in a day or two to see if you've remembered. I'll come to your house, shall I? Out of office hours. But you surely don't think I had anything to do with Kate's disappearance. All the others. We have to check everything, Mr. Cousins. Well, I dare say, but I was very fond of Kate. I am very fond of Kate. Even though... Yes. Even though. What you tell me about her past, that doesn't change anything, Sergeant. Of course. Uh, perhaps if I could just ask you to think back, sir. Where were you at the times I've mentioned? Well, it's very difficult, Sergeant. Can you remember where you were at a particular time a week or so ago? It's my job to remember, sir. Well, I'll try. Tell me again. Saturday 17th, fortnight ago. Let's see now. Saturday the 17th, here we are. I worked in the morning, looked at a couple of properties. Where? Um, both in North Oxford. May I have the addresses? Yes, but I'm sure the owners will recall my visit. I'm sure they will. And in the afternoon? That's easy. I went to the cottage. I go most weekends. Alone? Yes, Sergeant. Alone. This cottage, sir, where is it? Aston St Mary. You know it? Oh, it's a lovely spot, yeah. It's one of my favourite Cotswold villages. I have a flat in town, but I need to escape from time to time. Tell me, sir, Aston St Mary, uh, how far would that be from Copley Wood? From Copley Wood? Well, not far. 
Three or four miles, perhaps. Oh, really? How close is that? And the evening Linda went missing, he said he was in his flat? Yes, but alone. Stayed in all night. A solitary man, our Mr. Cousins. Not married, no girlfriends. Did he tell you that? No, the girl's in the office. But he likes women, you say? Well, they say. He really does fancy Kate, they reckon. Enough to snatch her away? And Mary, and Linda? He certainly doesn't come across as a weirdo. Neither did Crippin. But he was near Columbury when Mary Rush vanished in Copley Wood. Brian Doyle was nearer, and he can't account for his movements when the two others disappeared. Morris has talked to him? Yes, claims to have been out on the town, drinking. Which town? Oxford. He doesn't deny that. Then he could have been... It's possible. What about Dr. Avery? What did he have to say for himself? Junior hospital doctors raced around like scalded cats. He was on duty officially on every occasion, but uh, disappeared for half an hour. No one would have noticed. It's like a madhouse there. Eh? Oh, very encouraging. Round here, Robert. Right. Two miles to Clapham. Uh, one thing, though. You were right about his birthday. What? I checked with the hospital administrator. Avery's birthday is in two months' time. Well done. Now, why that? Now, why the hell should he lie about that? I don't know, sir. Doesn't make much sense, does it? Nothing makes much sense at the moment. But once we find out who took those photographs... All our printing is done here, Superintendent, on these machines. If we could go somewhere quieter, Mr. Sharp. We used to, of course, come into the office. Thank you. I thought you'd like to see the whole setup. Not at the moment. Oh, well, please do sit down. Thank you. On the telephone, I was led to believe... What did you lead Mr. Sharp to believe, Sergeant? Nothing, sir. Just asked about the pornographic pictures. I did explain that particular magazine is a very small part of our business. Not a part I take any pride in, but market forces, you know, there does regrettably seem to be a demand... You publish obscene material, Mr. Sharp. Well, I wouldn't... There are laws which cover that. I haven't broken them, really, I uh, haven't. Perhaps not. My colleagues in the vice squad would know. But surely... If, if you're, you're to... totally honest with me, Mr. Sharp, if I can rely on your full cooperation, there may be no need to involve them. Who sent you the pictures we're interested in? Calls himself Brown. Speak up. Brown. J.P. Brown. Really? How unusual. The, the slides were unsolicited. Most of our material reaches us like that. But you must have an address to pay him. Let me guess. An accommodation address. A box number. Afraid so. Uh, a box number in Oxford. Well, if you give it to us, I dare say we'll track it down. And I shall want the original slides. Not that I expect much from them. They'll have been well handled. Yes, I... I put them ready for you. Yeah. And, uh... The new ones. New ones? What new ones? This morning's post, just after I'd spoken to the sergeant. From the same source, J.P. Brown? Yes. Here we are. Uh, same girl, but with another girl. Uh, you'll see, I'll put the slide in the light box for you. There. A tableau. That's what we call it when Is there's more than what you call it. Yes. That's Mary Rush, sir, isn't it? With Kate... I shall need to take these slides. Of course. I confess I would have used them. See, Mr. Brown's work is of a high technical quality, although it does uh, lack animation. Good God, man, of course it lacks animation. Look at the expressions in their eyes. Those wretched girls are out of their minds. I'm sorry? Drugged, Mr. Sharp. Heavily sedated in some way. Oh, dear, I didn't realise. Believe me, I would never tarnish our reputation. If you wish to preserve one shred of your tattered reputation, Mr. Sharp, you will do two things for me instantly. Of course, anything. Send payment for these new slides in the usual way to this accommodation address. Yes, yes, I will. And if you receive any more material from J.P. Brown, you will contact me on this number. I understand. But do you think there will be more? Oh, I think there might. Another girl. I see. Am I to be told what this is all about? No. I wouldn't want you to compromise your integrity. You despise me, Superintendent, don't you? You can redeem yourself, Mr. Sharp. Send that money to J.P. Brown and you will help us apprehend a degenerate and dangerous man. You might even be saving someone's life. Well, just in time, James. Closing up soon. Mr. Hunter. That's me. I suggest you close up now. We'll wait. Hey, what? Oh, I see. Chief Superintendent Thorne and this is Detective Sergeant Abbott. So, what can I do for you, gents? We'd like a description of one of your customers. Get dozens in here for fags, A newspapers. special customer, one that uses this accommodation address. Well, I do that for quite a few people, too. We're only interested in one, Mr. J.P. Brown. So? You do have a customer of that name? Yes, I think so. Only think. 
A lot of people pick up mail here. But you keep records? Not really. Accounts, of course, all strictly kosher. But we know J.P. Brown used your services recently. Didn't he, Mr. Hunter? Could be. So what yeah. does he look like, this Mr. Brown? Hard to say. Nothing special. Come on, you can do better than that. Height. Tall or short? Medium, I'd say. Medium height. Not fat, not thin. What about accent? Any accent? Never spoke much. Just handed over the package. Well, not much to talk about, is there? You're telling us nothing, Hunter. Sorry. I'd like to help, if I could. Well, you can, and you will. Oh? Huh? From tomorrow, there will be several plainclothes officers here out in the back. When Brown shows up, as he will, sooner or later, you will identify him to the officers. Is that clear? Can you do that? I mean, can you make me? Would you rather I call in the VAT inspectors and the Ford squad to examine your accounts, Mr. Hunter? Would you like that? Oh, you're not going to eat that sausage, sir? Mm. No, take it. Oh, it's not. I suddenly lost my appetite. Mm. Oh, something in the paper, is it? United lost again. Never bothered an evening one. How could he be so bloody stupid? Who? Oh. Look. Where? That headline, Missing Girl's New Lead. He assured me he'd say nothing. A Chief Constable Merivale promised that an arrest was imminent in the case of the three missing local girls. He revealed that officers had uncovered a link between the girls and a pornography racket. He paid what has Merivale got for a brain, mushy peas? If Brown reads this, he won't go anywhere near Hunter, will he? Not if he's got any sense, he won't. Coming! On time! You're a punctual man, Mr. Brown. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me phoning, but well, I thought we ought to have a little chat, eh? Come through to the back. It's nice and private there. I got a nice drop of scotch. Let's have the light here. Right. Uh huh. Not one blow, but several. Mm. Cover the spit of the fraction. Oh, yes. Ah, the seventh cavalry, too late as always. <laughs> Lesion right here. Yeah. Compound fracture. Yeah. They're in here, sir. Good morning, Thorne. You knew the deceased, they told me. Not a good friend, though. He could have been a useful one. What have you got so far? Uh, almost everything. I can tell you how, when, and where, but not, I fear, who. So? Time of death between 10 p.m. and midnight. Stop from behind with a blunt object. You still call them blunt objects, do you? Several blows. He was only a small man. It didn't require great strength. And he was put off guard, I should say, the drink. Glasses on the table. <sighs> Expecting a cosy chat, poor sod. I don't think your topsy will tell me much more. We'll take him away when you've finished. Right. I bet I'll carry on here. You get the house to house going. Someone in the street might have noticed something last night. Not a good word to say for him. No one in the street. They reckon he was up to all sorts of shady fiddles. My guess is that Hunter was going in for a spot of extortion. He saw the newspaper article and put two and two together. You know, being character from what the neighbours told me. But they saw nothing. Nothing of Brown. They were inside watching the box, weren't they? But this lady opposite. Now, Mrs Fleming. She was sure about a car? Oh, yes. She went to bed about 11. As she was drawing the curtain, she saw this car pulling away. Could have been anyone in the street. She said it was a car she didn't recognise. She knows most of them. An observant lady. Bit of a nosy park, I'm all right. I thank the law for curtain twitches. And she is certain that it was a Ford Escort. Yeah, convinced. The son-in-law has one. So, what do we have? A green or blue Ford Escort. It's hard to tell the difference in the dark. But that was what the retired headmistress thought as well. The car that picked Kate Minden up at the bus stop, that was blue or green. It does sound as if it might be the same car. Perhaps Doyle was right. It could have been the same car that took Mary Rush away. And this time we do have a bit more, the number. No, not much of it. She's pretty sure it was an F, Reg, and the first number was a four, but that's all. That could be enough. How many blue or green escorts with those characteristics are registered in Oxfordshire, Abbott? God knows. We'll give you a list. You shall we'll give you a list. You shall we'll give you a list. You shall we'll give you a list. Yeah, but, uh, 
I mean, it would take forever to check them all out, and the car might have been registered of anyway. Of course, but have you got a better idea? No. No, I suppose not. In the meantime, we shall need to check again on the whereabouts of Mrs. Cousins, Doyle, Avery and Woods. They shouldn't have any problems remembering where they were last night, should they? Sir, aren't we forgetting Steve Minden? He's got formies out there somewhere. Oh, no, I've not been... forgotten. I saw him as the most likely contender. I put out an APB on him. That's why I know he didn't kill Hunter. How can you be sure? He spent last night in the cells at Banbury Police Station, arrested after a pub brawl. <sighs> Wonderful, isn't it? He was the one I suspected most. So... Until we have anything further to go on, we'd better eliminate the others. Sure, you don't want a cup? No, thank you, Dr. Avery. You don't mind if I do? I shan't stay awake without the caffeine. Please. I haven't slept much the last week. No, they work you too hard. And the worry. If I close my eyes, I keep... The... We're doing all we can, Dr. Avery. Yeah. In the paper, it said you were going to make an arrest. I would have thought by uh, now... It would have been a done. few setbacks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to ask you more questions, but it is necessary. If it will help, Linda. I hope it will. So, if you would just tell me where you were last night, between nine and midnight. Me? Why should that have anything? Please. Been? At the hospital. I, I was on duty until this morning. You were there all night? You never left? Correct. Oh, well, well no, that's not strictly true. Please be strictly true, Dr. Avery. Well, we take breaks. We have to. I, I just took a stroll to get a breath of fresh air. We have... And papers. where did you stroll? Uh, just in the grounds. Uh, it, it was a warm night, and I kept thinking of Linda. How long were you away? About half an hour, I suppose. What time was this? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Uh, must have been about 11. Casualty was quiet when I got back, so the pubs couldn't have shut. Do you have a car, Dr. Avery? Mm-hmm. Where do you keep it? Well, at the hospital. Parking's hopeless here. The landlady has the use of the garage. What make? Well, nothing very grand. Not at my salary. A Ford. An Escort? <laughs> no, a Fiesta. A clapped-out Fiesta. I've checked, sir, and Doyle definitely doesn't have a car. Just his motorbike. But... But what? His dad has a blue Escort. F. Reg? No, much older, eh? I suppose our curtain twitcher could have been mistaken. She only got a glimpse. Oh, she seems so certain. I reckon, too, she can tell a fiesta from an escort. I'll check with her again, but she didn't have any doubts. Left here, under the bridge. And Doyle was out in the piss again. Well, he never seems to do anything else. Yeah, a terrible hangover. Couldn't remember much about last night. He'll remember if I get hold of him. Not that I really see him behind this. It's all too clever, the photographs, the accommodation address. That's all beyond Doyle. What about Quentin Woods? Conference in London, three days devoted to Anglo-Saxon heroic verse. Really? Oh, they're in with me. It went last night about eight o'clock. Not in a blue escort, by any chance? By train, or so his housekeeper said. Which leaves just cousins. Yeah. I don't see him in this. Why put up a thousand pounds of his own money? Would he do that if he was guilty? I would. That's just what I would have done, Abbott. Oh, I don't know. He doesn't come across like that. You'll see. Mm, perhaps. If his office is right, he ought to be at a site meeting about now. Foot down, Abbott. Yeah, I'll do better than that, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sergeant, but a lot of money is involved here. This had better be important. Yes, sir, I assure you. Yes, well. This is Mr. Cousin, Superintendent. This is really very embarrassing, Superintendent, being hauled out in the middle of a site meeting. I dare say, Mr. Cousins, but this is now a murder inquiry. We won't keep you long. Yes, of course, I'm sorry. You're sure this man, Hunter, was connected with Kate and the other girls in some way? Yes. But how can I help? Simply by telling us where you were late last night, sir. Oh, not that again. I'm not stupid, and I know you have to suspect everyone... But don't you understand what I feel about Kate? I suppose I'm half in love with her. Not that I said anything, but I will, when you find her. If you would just tell us, sir, last night... I stayed in the flat, and before you ask, I was alone. And you were in all evening? Yes, nursing a cold. Really? Seems to have cleared up? Yes, it does. You must let me know what pills you take. Look, is there anything else? They're waiting for me. There is a recession. Do you have a car with you, Mr. Cousins? Yes. The red one over there. Why? Nothing. Well, we mustn't detain you. Nice flats they're building here. Expensive. We're handling the sales. Is that why you have a camera with you? Glossy pictures for the brochure? Yes, something like that. I use it all the time. Keen on photography, then, are you, Mr. Cousins? I know a bit about it. Helps in this job. Yes, I expect it does. Never know what might turn up worth photographing. Oh, 
Where are you? Oh, there you are. Come away from there. What are you doing? Playing? Now, what you got there? Leave it. Oh, get out of that water, you stupid animal. Come on. Oh. Oh, no. Bit more complicated, this one, Thorne. More of a professional challenge. Another friend of yours? No. There's no doubt it is Kate Minden, sir. No, I'm afraid not. We'll bring her mother in, do a formal identification. We'll try and tidy her up a bit, but she'll still look a mess, I'm afraid. Bad facial scarring. What caused it? Do you know yet? Some sort of acid, probably fuming nitric. Or hydrochloric. Possibly, I suppose. What makes you think of that? It's used regularly in photographic processing. She's been scalped. She's been scalped. Oh, why should anyone do that? You're sure she was dead before she was put in the river? Absolutely. No water in the lungs, you see. And apart from the acid burns, no marks of violence, no sexual abuse. So what killed her? My surmise at this stage is heart failure. Heart failure? Probably induced by the acid attack. You see, she suffered from a heart abnormality. The sort of thing you find after a childhood attack of rheumatic fever. Perhaps that explains her passion for success, her thriftiness. She wanted to ensure her child was provided for. Poor little Zelda. I mean, she was vulnerable, certainly, and a massive shock to the Perhaps system. It was a struggle. She, she tried to get away or something. Um, when she died, whoever was keeping her panicked and dumped the body in the river. But why go to the bother of shearing off the hair? Ah, whoever did this must be mad, crazy. They don't always have reasons, do they? Oh, but they do, according to their own deranged logic. The hair is significant in some way, I'm sure of that. I'll confirm all this for you in my report. Oh, there's one more thing you should know. She had been massively sedated. I expected that. Any idea what with? Well, one of the major tranquilizers. Hmm. Cover her up, Sergeant. You know, I'll never get used to this. Never. Uh. Poor kid. Oh, oh, Dr. Avery. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I knew you were in. Good morning, ladies. Uh, will you come in? Uh, uh, no. Uh, we were just going out shopping when we heard the news on the radio. What news? Well, they found the body of one of those poor girls... What? ...in the river. Yes. Oh, no. Who? Did, uh, did they say? Did they, they say who it was? No, but we thought you should know. I, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't your... your Miss Jackson, but... Yes, but it could be, couldn't it? Let's not mm. pretend. Now, the police. Well, they would know, you see. Well, they came here, didn't they? They were the ones in charge. Of course. I, I must go and meet We you. have the car out. We can drive you there. Yes. It won't take a moment. It would put your mind at rest, wouldn't it? For God's sake, what's happened? I was going to contact you, Dr. Avery. It isn't Linda. Thank God for that. I know, of course, that it's still time. But I'm afraid it means she's in great danger. We have to find her and Mary Rush. I can't have anything less than your full cooperation. So stop lying to me, Dr. Avery. What do you mean, lying? It wasn't your birthday, was it, the day Linda vanished? Oh, that. No, I, I'm sorry, but there was a reason. Tell me. Well... Linda and I, you see, we're, we're married. We have been for a year, and it was our anniversary. Why the secret? Money. Linda's grants and bursaries would have been affected by a change in her status. I suppose it must seem a bit of a cheat, but... Well, we Quite could a afford... practice deception. Is there anything else you've been deceiving me about? No. Did you take photographs of your wife, Dr. Avery, of an intimate kind? No, of course I did. Why, of course? Is that so shocking to you? <sighs> Linda... Hated having a photograph taken. Well, you know, so, some people are like You that. mean you tried it and she wouldn't cooperate? No. But, but I knew she had a thing about it, she told me. I, I mean, she once had a minor row with her tutor over it. With Quentin Woods? Yes. He's a camera freak and he wanted her to pose for him. Now, I mean, nothing sinister, just a studio portrait, but she wouldn't. I see. Uh, sir, I've got something. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't oh, that's all right, Sergeant. Dr. Avery is just going. Oh, yes, the ladies will be waiting for me. We know where to find you if we need you. Dick, look, you still can't think that Goodbye, I... Doctor.
I must see Woods as soon as he's back from London. Really? So, what have you got for me, Albert? The list from Swansea. Well? I got a team checking out the details. I thought it would take forever, but no, as soon as we got to the seas... As in sea for cousins? Yeah. But he's got a golf. He also has a sister, and she lives with Mum and Dad in Wantage. And? She owns a blue Escort. F registered, 468 and so on. But if it's her car... Wait, I've got a PC to call at the house, crime prevention stuff. The girl's away at college. She leaves the car at home in term time. So, cousins could have had access to a blue Escort. But why should he bother? He's got a perfectly good car of his own. But it is a connection, isn't it? I know it could be a coincidence, but what else have we got? Nothing much. And he admits he was besotted with Kate, and he takes photographs. And he's a loner. He doesn't seem to have girlfriends. Perhaps he, he can't form relationships. The other girls, well, uh, they're lookalikes, aren't they? Kate rebuffed him, so he finds substitutes. Well, it makes some kind of sense. We can also establish a link with Columbry. He could have spotted Mary Rush there, followed her. But, Linda, we can't tie him in with Linda Jackson. I think I can. I've been back to check. Check what? The house opposite is for sale. I noticed when I was interviewing the two old ladies upstairs. I saw the sign out of their window. One of Cousin's properties, right? Right. So he must have been there. And that's when he could have noticed Linda, the long auburn hair. Another one for his collection. You see, sir? Circumstantial, but it does fit. Kate's dead. Murdered by some pervert. It's about bloody time you found him. Believe me, Mr. Cousins, I understand your distress. Do you? You have a funny way of showing it with your constant snide insinuations. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I never drive my sister's car. I am not holding two girls captive in either my flat or my cottage. And if you don't believe me, go and search. I never said I didn't believe you. And another thing. I did not visit that house we're selling. I don't deal with that part of the city. May I ask who did? I can check the file. Could it have been Kate Minden? Just a minute. Yes, it was. Kate did all the work over there. Could that be important? It might be. Thank you for your help, Mr. Cousins. Is that all, then? For the moment. You find him, Inspector. Because if I find him, I'll kill him with my bare hands. And you needn't come and call on me, then, because I'll come down to your office and I'll boast about it. Sherry, Superintendent? No, thank you, sir. And you, Sergeant? Uh, no, not for me, thank you. Then I shall drink alone. I need it. These conferences can be extremely tiresome. And you've only just come back, sir? About 20 minutes ago. The train was late, of course. Did you stay in London overnight? Mm, in my club. It's very peaceful there. People would remember you, I dare say. <laughs> well, you'll have to ask them, won't you? If you must play these silly games. The other dates I left with you. Have you been able to... I've taken advice, Thorne, for personal reasons and to avoid embarrassment to, uh, shall we say... A lady friend, I don't care to discuss my movements with you. I'm under no obligation to do so. This is a murder inquiry, Dr. Woods. Two deaths. I would have thought that outweighed any worries about your sordid little peccadillos. How dare you talk Your to reputation like as a womanizer is hardly a state secret. I think you better Did leave. you exercise your charm on Linda Jackson? Did she rebuff you, is that it? I'm going to call my solicitor. You may well need him. I understand you had an argument with Linda because she refused to let you take her photograph. No. No, 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 it wasn't like that. You, you, you can't believe that. Please. Tell us how it was then, sir. I'm a keen photographer. I specialise in portraiture. Linda has a wonderful bone structure, so I simply asked her to sit for me. But she refused? Yes, but, I mean, there was no argument. I, I, I made a little joke of it. Did you? It was a genuine interest. I take photography seriously. I mean, look around you. This is all my work. Yes. Very impressive. This picture of the baby. Yes, my granddaughter. Do you like it? It's most unusual. Abbott. Does this remind you of
satin bow. Very distinctive knot, isn't it? Remember the first pictures? The ones of Kate alone? She was trussed up in a satin cord, wasn't she? Of course, and the knot. I'm sure it was the same. Do you ever send any of your photographs away to specialist magazines, sir? Pornographic magazines? That's an appalling question, Superintendent. But I had to ask it, sir. How did you get the idea to present the baby like this, tied in a bow like a chocolate box? Please, sir, it's very important. Well, I, I can't pretend it was an original idea. Several years ago, I saw a similar picture in a photographer's window in Reading. I bought the print. Do you still have it? Uh, somewhere. I, I could try and find it for you. you know, if it's urgent. It could be. Yes. Well, it might take several hours. I'll leave you my number. Please let me know as soon as you find it. To do these checks on the tranquilizer prescriptions, but you know our doctors hand them out like sweeties. It could take forever. We don't have forever. We have to find those girls quickly. What about the car numbers? Uh, I'll pull them off that once we found cousin sister. And get them on it. I don't think cousins fits. Who do you think does fits? I'm not sure if we're looking for one man even. To abduct and hold three girls. That needs more than one person, Abbott. I suppose one could be a woman. But this J.P. Brown character could have a wife, a girlfriend, you know, someone besotted by him. Thorn here. Yes, put him through. It's Quentin Woods. Morning, sir. You do? Excellent. Yes. Yes, I've got that. And just the name Vic? Thank you. I'm very grateful to you, sir. That's the address of the photographic studio, is it? Yes. The original was the work of a photographer who simply signed himself Vic, Sir Woods says. We'll need a car, Abbott. Right, sir. Oh, what about Uncle Quentin? Are we forgetting about him? I right? think so, for the moment, anyway. He did letch after women. He was the last one to see Linda, and he wouldn't say where he was. Oh, yes, a uh, car for Superintendent Thorne immediately, please. But as far as we know, he doesn't own a Ford Escort. He didn't know Mary Rush or Kate Minden. He was hardly likely to be concealing two women in a house we visited, and he's a distinguished professional man. Yes, yeah, so was Quentin, sir. Touché. But if you're talking of doctors, your theorising must have brought you round to Dr Avery. Well, I admit it had crossed my mind. He could get hold of the drugs, he could have seen Kate at the house opposite, or she might have visited the hospital. Because of her heart condition? Yeah. Uh, it struck me too. But where could Avery detain three women, and where's the connection with Mary Rush? No. I think we're better employed tracking Vic in Reading. It's our one lucky break in this investigation, those photographs of Kate and of the baby. I'm nearly convinced they're taken by the same person. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry to disturb what? you. Oh, uh, do forgive me. It's always so quiet in the afternoons. Did you just want to browse, or were you looking for a particular title? Uh, neither, I'm afraid. We're police officers. I see. Superintendent. How can I help you? I'm Sylvia Turk, by the way. Turk Books, that's me. How long have you had this bookshop, Mrs. Turk? Oh, forever. Well, nearly ten years. Others come and go in this street. I just carry on. The photographic shop next door, how long has that been for sale? Over a year. But can you wonder in the present economic climate? To think we were once a nation of shopkeepers, Superintendent. It looks in a pretty poor state. What happened to it? Well, surely you remember. It was a terrible tragedy. The police were all over the place. Oh, once the fire brigade had finished. A fire? An accident? Oh. No one seemed to be sure. In the end, the coroner plumped for accidental death. Who died in the fire, Mrs. Turk? Mr. Stein, the owner. Such a nice old man. He often used to pop in for a chat. He lived over the studio. Was Mr. Stein's first name Victor? Oh, no. Richard. Richard David Stein. You must be thinking of his assistant. That was Vic. Brilliant photographer, Vic. Everybody said so. That's why the business flourished. It was such a pity they quarrelled, and over such a silly thing. Who quarrelled? Vic and Mr. Stein, of course. So where's Vic gone now? I don't know. I've never seen her again. Her? Vic was a woman? Oh, sorry. Didn't you know that? Yes. Middle-aged lady. Not much to look at. Not interested in men, I imagine. But wonderful with a camera. This quarrel, what was it about? <laughs> Such a stupid thing. I suppose one shouldn't laugh, but you have to see the funny side of it. Of what, Mrs. Turk? Well, Mr. Stein told me the story in confidence, of course. It seems that 
One day they were working in the studio and he tripped over something. He clutched at Vic to steady himself, as one does. And to his great embarrassment, he pulled her wig off. So striking it was, too. Lovely reddish colour. Well, more auburn, I should say. I'd never guessed, though I suppose it was a bit at odds with the rest of her appearance. How did Vic react? Furious. You see, poor Mr. Stein was so overcome, he burst into laughter. Well, he couldn't help himself. You know, nervous laughter. Vic stormed out. She never worked for him again. How long after that did the fire take place? Oh, quite soon. A few weeks, at the very most. If Vic was a woman, that would explain why the girls were off guard. Why well, they might have got into a car with a stranger. And it took no great strength to kill Hunter. Or perhaps as a male accomplice. You said two people. Yes, but a man? No, 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 I don't think so. Yeah, the photography. There has to be a connection. I'm sure of it, but proof. To find evidence that could take months. We don't have that time. You saw what happened to Kate. How long before another body turns up? Vic. Well, she could be anywhere. It's been over a year. The car numbers. Perhaps you'll find something there. Well, that's this evening written off. Mm. I'll go down one at home either. I said we go out for a drive. Really? Yeah, I often do on a summer evening, you know. Broadway Hall, Copley Woods, Burford. Yeah, I promise. What did you Mary. say, Abbott? I was just thinking where we might Copley go. Copley Woods. You said you'd drive out to Copley Woods. Yeah, people do. It's lovely out brilliant, there. Brilliant, Abbott. Do you know what you are? You're quite brilliant. You do understand, Mr. Cousins, that if need be, I shall deny this meeting ever took place. Deny ever being in this pub. Yes, you've made it very clear. You see, I remember what you said. What you'd do if you ever found Kate's killer. Well, I believe I have. What? But I can't prove it. But surely... My superior is a cautious man. He wants more evidence before I can ask for search warrants. But by then, it, well, it might be too late. Well, you're not asking me to strangle anyone with my bare hands. Did I really say that? You did, uh, heat of the moment, I expect. I wouldn't, of course. I couldn't. No, I don't believe you would, Mr. Cousins. But you think you can do this? If it goes wrong... If it goes wrong, or if you're wrong then I will have caused great distress to an innocent person. Yes, I realise that. And I can't help you. You'll be on your own. I don't see you had any choice, sir. It's not too late, Albert. This is against all regulations, so you can get out of the car and walk away. Uh, I gave up over promotion a long time ago, if sir. If this goes wrong, you could be joining the three million unemployed. I saw Kate Minden on that slab, sir. It's worth the risk. How did you persuade Cousins? I didn't have to. I think he really perhaps did love Kate. What time was he going to be there? Ten. He'll be in the car park and see us arrive, then it's up to him. I hope your information is reliable, Abbott. It's nearly ten now. I think so. With a neighbour like that, you don't need community policing. I'm glad you don't live next to me. He, he looks up. Look, garage doors. Good. Yes, we're in business. A green escort. Got it. It was on the list, of course, just as you said. And only the driver. That's very good. Right, Abbott. Now, not too close. Keep well back. I can just see them, sir. Two bays away. He's close now. Uh, good morning. I understand you wanted to see me. I'm the manager. Good morning, sir. Police. Oh, dear. What's the problem? No problem. Just routine. We're doing a general security review. Supermarket break-ins are on the increase uh, locally. And... Really? We've had no trouble. I assure you we run... Oh, oh, sounds as if you've got some now. Come on, Abbott. How dare you? You did that deliberately. I'll you got in my bloody way, you silly cow. That's enough of that. I'm a police officer. Uh, just move along, ladies and gentlemen. Please stand back. If you're a policeman, then arrest this lout. He deliberately attacked me. Old bag was in my way. That's no excuse for violence. Violence? I tripped over a stupid trolley. I just grabbed that up. That's not true. It's Miss Foyle, isn't it? Yes. But how did you know? Don't you remember I came to see you a week or so ago about Linda Jackson? Oh, yes. Lucky for you we were here, Miss Foyle. 
If you'd like to take Miss Foyle to the manager's office, Abbott. Sir, what for? Just so we can take a statement. There could be a case for prosecution here, common assault. Assault? What are you talking about? And you, young man, will come with me, quietly. I'm not sure if I want to be bothered with this. I need to get back. I'm afraid I must insist, Miss Foyle. Violence cannot be tolerated. Violence? It was an accident, wasn't it? How the hell was I supposed to know she was wearing a bloody wig? Abbott, will you tell the manager not to let anyone in here? Right, sir. You were very convincing. Quite the lager lark, Mr. Cousins. When I grabbed her hair and it came off, I nearly carried on. Put my hands round her throat. But it still doesn't take us all the way. I'm sure she's Vic. I know she has a car that matches the description, and she has an accomplice, Miss Gower. And you can tie her in with two other girls. Linda lived in the same house, and Kate came to the house opposite. They would have seen her then. And Mary Rush. I can explain that as well, thanks to Sergeant Abbott. Huh? Well, you see, if Abbott goes for evening drives to Copley Woods, then why not Miss Foyle and Miss Gower? They're country types, fresh air and gardening. I'm sure that's where they saw Mary, running in distress away from her boyfriend. She'd be grateful for a lift in that state, wouldn't she? Yes, from two kind, middle-aged ladies. They might even have been watching her for days. And she fitted their requirements with her long auburn hair. Well, you'll find Mary now, won't you? Her and Linda. Poor Kate. I'm sorry, Mr. Cousins. Very sorry. But I could still have got it all horribly wrong, even now. Well, we'll soon know. What do I do when we get there? Stay in the car. I've bent enough rules for one day. Yes? Miss Gow? Yes. Police. Uh, May I come in a moment? uh, Well, it's not really very convenient. Just for a moment? Thank you. Um... I expect you know I'm heading the investigation into the death of Kate Minden, as well as the two missing girls. My sergeant called on you, I believe, Sergeant Abbott. Uh, uh, Yes, about poor Miss Jackson. Oh, I'm afraid there was very little we could tell him. Indeed. We're still a long way from finding them, I have to say. Oh, dear. So we have to double-check everything. Look everywhere, that is, in any way connected with the case. You understand that, I'm sure. Well, yes, but... uh, This house is connected with the case. Linda Jackson lived here. Oh, yes, in in the downstairs flat. I know. Illogical, really, but my superiors do insist. It won't take me more than a few moments. Purely routine. Uh, Shall we start down here? Oh, no. Uh, No, it's not convenient now, and it's pointless anyway. I agree, but that's the way the system works, I'm afraid. We just have to plod on. Now, shall we start in the kitchen? Uh, I warrant. A search warrant. You must get one. Oh, I hardly think we need be as formal as that, Miss Gower. Do we? I was so sure. So sure. Nothing. You looked everywhere. Everywhere. Every room, every cupboard. She seemed so nervous, particularly when I asked to see the attic room. But nothing, nothing there. You said room. Attic. Room. Yes. There are two parallel. We sell a lot of these houses. You're sure? Yes. There'd be a connecting door. There was a screen against the wall. The door will be behind it. This time you're coming too, to help with regulations. Please. I had no idea, really. It's locked. The key, Miss Gower, now. Oh, God, I didn't know. Please. Stand by. <laughs> Mr. Cousins? the light. Oh, it's here. Oh, God. Miss Jackson. Mary. I didn't want to. She made me. She did. Nothing. I'll tell you nothing. You're not obliged to. Did Sergeant Abbott tell you that, Miss Foyle? I did, sir. Your friend, Miss Gower, has been most cooperative. Told us everything. You forced her, she said. Bullied her. I can believe that. You can believe what you like. An accident, she says. Kate tried to escape. A struggle. 
Was it like that? Never mind. Linda and Mary will be able to tell us in due course. Once they've recovered from what you did to them, drugged, bound, degraded, what have they ever done to you, Miss Foyle? Tell me that. Help me to understand. You? What could you know? How they flaunted their beauty, abused it. How did they abuse it, Miss Foyle? To amuse men. Men like you. Because that's all you see. It's all you want, isn't it? The rest of us are filth, lower than the animals. Girls like that. Don't expect me to cry for them. Because now they know what it's like to be ugly, to be used. No, Miss Foyle, I don't understand. But fortunately, I don't need to. I can leave that to others. It's nice out here. You've got to admit it. One of your better ideas. Oh, I needed the fresh air after that venom, that hatred. It must have been about here they picked up Mary Rush. Yes, poor kid. They'll be all right. Oh, in time. Physically, anyway, the bruises will heal, the hair will grow. But mentally, who knows what scars will be left on the mind. Uh, Miss Gower's statement gives us all the details, anyway. She was very much the submissive partner, did what she was told. She admits driving the car to Hunter's shop, but she just waited outside, and she insists Kate's death was heart failure. Do you believe her? Uh, I might if it wasn't for the acid, the sculpt hair. That was Miss Foyle, or Vic, as she used to be. That one could be capable of anything. There's such hatred there. More than I've seen for a long time. But it's calculating and controlled. Not insane, then? Oh, I don't know. Such a fine line. She's got a coldly rational side to her. Look at the way they brazenly drove Avery to see me the morning that Kate was found in the river. Yeah, why did they do that? Oh, so he would confirm for them that it was Kate's body. Oh, I see. Oh, very calculating. That sounds sane enough to me. They hated Kate's beauty and destroyed it, driven by an obsession. Pornography is the key. I don't understand that part of it. It degraded the beauty she both envied and hated. And if you think about it, it gave her power over men. I've no doubt we shall have a belly full of psychiatrist reports before we finish, but my guess is the incident with Stein, the wig, and the setting fire to his shop tipped her over the edge, ignited the paranoia. So she is mad, then? Well, beyond reason, anyway. We'd better get back. It's getting cold. And the chief constable will be wanting our report. Ah, oh, um... What are you going to tell him, sir? About cousins? That business in the supermarket? I shall gloss over it, Abbott. Not confuse him with details. After all, he's got something to tell the press, take their mind off the art thefts. Will we get away with it, sir? <laughs> Why not, Abbott? We got a result, didn't we? We got a result. John Castle played Thorn. Andrew Branch, Abbott, Jonathan Taffler, Peter Cousins, Michael Cochran, Dr. Avery, and Benjamin Whitrow, Quentin Woods, in Double Negative by John Penn. Brian Doyle was Matthew Morgan, Kate Minden, Jane Whittenshaw, Steve Minden, David Holt, Mrs. Richards and Mrs. Turk, Kate Binchy, Hurst, Philip Anthony, Mary Rush, Teresa Gallagher, Linda Jackson, Sandra James Young, Miss Foyle, Diana Payan, Miss Gower, Jill Graham, the pathologist and Mr. Sharp, John Baddeley. The play was dramatised by Melville Jones from John Penn's novel Outrageous Exposure. The director was Martin Jenkins. <laughs>